Okay, we're on Google Earth. We're taking a look at the land masses and we're trying to <coughs> imagine or have a hypothesis of how everything got the way it did, how it is presently. <coughs> so I'm going to cater to tectonic plate theory a little bit and I'm going to add in factor in the expanding earth theory which needs to be given a lot more consideration and some more serious thought. I'm also going to factor in in the background of what I'm saying about the hollow earth theory which I think is a third aspect um, or method of looking at the planet. Now, <clears throat> we're going to have to take into consideration about shapes. We're going to have to think about shapes. And we need a proper understanding of shape. And that's the trick. That's the challenge because most people don't understand about shape and how you can find out from the shapes of the features how there is a direction of movement and that can be known just from the shape. <coughs> In fact when you look at the earth all the shapes and that's Another way of saying the land masses, the land shapes, and that is their three-dimensional shape, not just their outline. All of it is determined by movement. So, you know, we actually have all the evidence right in front of us on the surface. It's evidence of what's going on underneath and across the surface. So what I did here is for an elevation profile. And you can see on Google Earth it says elevation profile. And now this will tell you how deep it is under the ocean. You go over to this point, you see it's almost 14,000 yeah, 14, feet under water. So that's the depth of the water above the land. However, when you go to here, it's either you want to call it a rise or a shoal, or just to be blunt, it's a submerged landmass. It's a submerged island. And this is ancient. We don't know when it, when it got there under the water. But we know that at some point, it wasn't under the water right here. So here it's deeper. This is deeper under the water. Maybe, maybe it was an ancient uh, valley, or possibly a river. And then we come up to here, and there's this rise up into Madagascar. So there's a lot of interesting features like this, hundreds of them. But the major ones are worth looking at very carefully. Now, another thing you can see in Madagascar is this shape over here. And we can do another basic elevation profile by drawing a line, uh, line which is going to give us the elevation profile. They go to Port St. Louis and then St. Dennis. Those are existing islands. Okay. Let's get the elevation profile. Oops. I made a, I made a typical mistake that I always do. And I gotta adjust the uh, altitude bearings for the relativity relativity to the sea floor. Alright. So we've got the most shallow water 
that I can imagine at about two feet of water. Thirty feet, two feet of water right here. All right, then we have only six hundred feet of water, and it drops down. And again, over here, we've got about three hundred feet of water. So, you know, look at this. Oh, that's the island. So it's a, the island only has about fifty feet elevation. And then we've got this other island, which is very, very tall island. It's got some, it's got some mountains on it, St. Demis. But take a look at over here. This is where we should focus and find out why. We just found out the details of the depths here. This is absolutely a submerged land. There's, there's no question about it. And the existing island is called Victoria. All right, let's do another. Uh, and I, but what what I'm doing right now with the drawing the lines is very crude and rudimentary. But you can find out a lot to start figuring your your deeper research. Okay, so I just drew a line. It tells you it's 440, about 442 miles in length. It goes around. I did a spiral. So let's find out the elevation profile on this. And I think it's very fascinating to see that we have such a shallow land. Um, here's the island, which basically goes from here to here. That's the extent of the island above the water. But look, over here, I mean, we're talking a few hundred feet, very shallow. This over here, way far away from the island. You see how far you're going away? Look how far you are from the island, and it's only a hundred something feet. Again, it's just all here. Then it then it dips down. So this tells me over here was going to be the valley where. Uh, originally the rainwater and the rivers used to drain off of this landmass. So by finding the lowest point near the edge, you can find out where the river meets with the ocean. There must have been water coming off the land because of rain and it carved something out before it went under the ocean. And again we have this only a couple hundred feet here we have less we've got 89 feet right here until you get to this point it's kind of like an edge 74 feet and then it drops down over here 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 feet wow pretty incredible so <clears throat> to really see this let's get the edge view because they have given us the three dimensional capability with this program and what we're looking at if this was in the middle of a continent it would be called a mesa basically you know for lack of, of a better term I, I think there are some oceanography terms that I'm not familiar with as of yet and uh, you know if you're an expert and if you've been devoting your life to this maybe you could fill it in. Uh, I'm just an amateur so you know please don't make fun of me. Um, but what does this tell us about the expanding earth? I don't think that we can really segue yet but I want, I want to get into expanding earth uh, from this point. And here, we, here we've got where I went over the edge. This, this I remember was about 80 feet and this was like 70 feet of water. It was like a lip I don't know if it was accurate, the readings, the data, but there's, 
either 80 or 70 feet of water here and then it drops all the way down here to uh, 8,000 feet so that's that's pretty huge that is that's a substantial drop and if you want to look at this on the edge let's go ahead and see the extreme cliff that has to be under the water here right there that's that's more than a mile of drop uh, down into there so pretty incredible just you know if this was on land I mean wow you would be just looking at almost a sheer cliff of a mile high and this is like all the way around well not not exactly all the way around but a lot of this feature where did I go sometimes it just jumps okay so and then you look and it's interesting how part of the island is just these mountains sticking up that's the only thing that remains uh, for the land dwellers that we are this is the only thing that that uh, emerges above the water so <clears throat> um, and you have these other similar kind of features here but they seem to be these mountains that come out of the plains like a flat plateau and I don't know whether they're volcanic or what we have to study the ge geology and study the uh, the type of rocks study the age of the rocks if we can determine it pretty pretty accurately so let's get into expanding earth because that's really I've got to touch on that today the shapes will tell us a lot about that so let me just take you to one of the biggest features that I can and it's the Caribbean and northern South America okay so if you have an atlas or you know you just want to try to visualize and follow along here on Google Earth it's that section of the world and it's how C Central America here just stretches around seems to be like unwinding like a you know like being pulled apart here see how it is shaped so this feature which is pretty obvious pretty pretty glaring uh, extreme feature is this trench it's a trench just to the south of Cuba and separating Cuba with Jamaica over here this is Jamaica so then you have Haiti and Puerto Rico Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico over here that are kind of look like they're covering over the trench somehow like the land just dropped over it and then the trench continues so you have to ask yourself how can that be but look at the shape that it makes and what I want to say is this originally the top of South America was joined over here like the bottom of the crust of South America was anchored here and somehow got broken off got pushed to where it is presently and you can see the outline here and kind of imagine South America itself the shape might have changed or expanded or, or compressed a little bit and jostled around but it was it must have been a land mass generally the same but its position changed so what it seems to be um, in relation to Central America is that this whole piece of Central America is unraveling off of the side of it because it's pretty obvious that the Andes see the whole mountain chain along the, the western side this is the Andes and it's a Cordillera Oriental Mountains but it, you know this this is a huge continuous mountain chain the Andes 
see that it's, it's the whole area and this